So we're now at the second paragraph at Conservapedia. Now remember, it's, it's going to get faster. I'm just laying the groundwork. Now it goes on to say, quote, A majority of the most prominent and vocal defenders of the evolutionary position, which employs methodological naturalism, have been atheists, unquote. Now, they then have a link to, uh, well, there's a couple of references here. Dr. Don Batten, a who's who of evolutionists, from Creation 20, December 1997, and Jonathan Sarfati, who, uh, from Refuting Evolution in Chapter 1. And we're going to start with Batten's article, which lists a who's, which is a who's who of evolutionists by Don Batten. Now, this is actually going to be in several parts because I'm going to examine in depth some of what their references say about a few people, including Stephen Jay Gould, who will be the next uh, video. So it starts with a who's who of evolutionists by Don Batten. Now, Don Batten has a Ph.D. in plant physiology from the University of Sydney, so he's a legitimate scientist. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. He apparently, you know, puts religion before his science. Now, I want you to see the last line. Uh, I had to copy the text because it wouldn't fit as a picture because it goes down quite a ways. It says, quote, They recognize that if they can persuade the general population to accept evolution as a fact, it will be the death of real Christianity, unquote. Now, this isn't just religion versus atheism, but atheism at death of Christianity. It's just a little paranoid. Also notice the parentheses around the word real in front of Christianity. They mean by this their version of Christianity, implying that those who espouse Christianity but don't accept their version aren't real Christians. This is hardly surprising, and we're going to look at this. But I want to stop and take a look at one of their references below. Now, after their entry of Jacques Monod, you see a superscript one which goes on to a footnote that says, The late Theodosius Dobzhansky was also a prominent pu public promoter of evolution and apparently claimed Russian Orthodox affiliation. However, in his 1970 book, Mankind Evolving, he favorably quoted Teilhard de Chardin, Evolution, not God, D.B., is a light which illuminates all facts, a trajectory which all lines of thought must follow. Earlier, he wrote, attempts to restrict the concept of evolution to biology are gratuitous. Life is a product of the evolution of inorganic nature, and man is a product of the evolution of life. Unquote. Now, D.B., is Don Batten, the creationist that wrote this insulting twaddle. Um, he could apparently read Dobzhansky's mind. Uh, and you notice how he put that evolution, not God, uh, is a light which illuminates all facts. By putting that in there, he completely changes the meaning of what Dobzhansky said. Uh, yeah, Theodosius Dobzhansky is a central figure in the field of evolutionary biology. He was a geneticist and an evolutionary biologist and was key in shaping modern evolutionary synthesis. And I said, look at the way Batten loses the words here, apparently claimed. However, what he's suggesting is that Dobzhansky isn't either religious or a Christian at all because he, Dobzhansky, doesn't follow Batten's version of Christianity. This shows a blatant, non-fundamentalist bias, something which is further demonstrated by his noting Dobzhansky favorably quoted Teilhard de Chardin without mentioning who that was. Well, I'm going to tell you. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin uh, was a French philosopher, a Jesuit priest, and a distant relative of Voltaire. His mother was Voltaire's great grandniece, as well as a paleontologist and geologist who took part in the discovery of Peking Man and Piltdown Man. Now, he was an expert on Eocene and mammals, was a friend and correspondent of the great paleontologist George Gaylord Simpson, and he was a participant in the 1930 Roy Chapman Andrews Central Asia Expedition. If you don't know who Roy Chapman Andrews was, he was a paleontologist and was the inspiration for Indiana Jones. And you should look into him. He is a really fascinating fellow, and I'm going to leave some links. Teilhard de Chardin is unfortunately not as celebrated as he should be for his work in synthesizing the continental geology of Asia. 
Uh, Duchardin developed uh, developed a philosophy surrounding evolution, and this unusual belief system has kind of tainted his reputation, uh, especially among the more you know rationalists who don't like combining the science with uh, metaphysics and religion. But for more, I want you to see the links below, including this excellent video, which is a talk by Professor Thomas Glick, who is a historian of science at the Boston University, titled Teilhard de Chardin, Orthogenesis and the Mechanism of Evolutionary Change. Why am I taking time with this? Teilhard de Chardin was a deeply religious man, a Jesuit priest and a philosopher, who sought to combine the fittest physical and metaphysical world. Yet Batten tries to diminish or disregard Dobzhansky's religious beliefs by pointing out that Dobzhansky quoted Teilhard de Chardin, priest, paleontologist, and philosopher. Now, how absurd is this? Batten is either an idiot or anti-Catholic or anti-Orthodox or both. As a last comment, what on earth is Dob Dobzhansky's relevance to Jacques Monod? Note that Monod is referred to as a signatory to the Humanist Manifesto, too. This is a not-so-subtle attempt to link Dobzhansky and de Chardin, as well as all of those who are religious and who accept evolution, with humanism and therefore atheism. Okay, now, let's look at their list. Since they think these people are so evil, well, at least that's implied, I couldn't help but put them in red type over a black background. Uh, so this is just the basic list to look at. And now we're going to take a closer look. And the colors are mine. The red and blue to emphasize certain things. Anything written in green, I added. Ernst Mayer, zoologist. I kind of had to stop here when I saw that. Because just saying only that is an insult. I'm not saying it's an insult to be a zoologist. I'm saying the way they, they put this, the way Don Batten put this, is an insult. Ernst Mayer was a giant and was, quote, one of the 20th century leading evolutionary biologists. He was also a renowned taxonomist, tropical explorer, orthodontologist, and historian of science. His work contributed to the conceptual revolution that led to the modern evolutionary synthesis of Mendelian genetics, systematics, and Darwinian evolution, and to the development of the biological species concept, unquote, from Wikipedia. Yes, I know, Wikipedia, but it is right here. I'm using Wikipedia for brief bios, but I will leave other links as well, okay? Then we have J.B.S. Haldane, Carl Sagan, and Isaac Asimov. J.B.S. Haldane was a geneticist who was also a Stalinist. Uh, that's what uh, Batten says. Now, <clears throat> that's simplistic. Yes, Haldane was a Marxist, uh, but he also lived at a time when that wasn't as uncommon as it is now. Uh, I, I would suggest a lot of people out here who've never seen it watch the movie Reds to understand a lot about uh, the period of history. There was a lot of excitement over communism and, and changes. and uh, So a lot of people became Marxists. But Marxist doesn't necessarily mean that you believe in the Russian system of communism or the... Uh, Chinese system of communism or anything like that. It's a philosophical belief. But the way we're, we're raised in this country is to think Marxism, communism, evil. But, but anyway, Haldane did at least partially support Stalin at one time. But to define him by just that, well, read the bio in the link below and see who he was in total. Uh, I've also linked a, a video that is from the Soviet Union it can be kind of a disturbing video because it uh, shows the it's called experiments in the revival of organisms and it shows them reviving different organs as well as like the head of a dog so it's a little you know queasy for some people but just the very beginning of the video is introduced by Haldane and I I've included this in case you wanted to see what he looked like or wanted to hear and then there's Carl Sagan a promoter of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and author of the anti-Christian book and movie Contact well, I think everybody here knows who Carl Sagan is. He's an American astronomer, astrophysicist, cosmologist, author, science popularizer, and science communicator in astronomy and natural sciences. He spent most of his career as a professor of astronomy at Cornell University, where he directed the Laboratory for Planetary Studies. 
And this is kind of important because I think so many people get the wrong idea sometimes about people on television. Uh, they We're so used to seeing talking heads, uh, it's sometimes difficult to realize that some of the people you're, you're encountering are actually really uh, adept at the subject they're talking about. And Carl Sagan was a real scientist. He published more than 600 scientific papers and articles and was author, co-author, or editor of more than 20 books. And again, I got most of this from Wikipedia, but hey, it's true. Now, I read Contact. I saw Contact. I certainly don't see it as anti-Christian. It certainly challenges Christianity, but if their beliefs are so wobbly that they can't withstand a challenge, then perhaps they need to dig a big hole in the ground, move in, and never come out. Isaac Asimov, science fiction writer, signatory to the Human Ma Humanist Manifesto II, and past president of the American Humanist Association. Isaac Asimov has always been one of my favorite writers. Uh, I probably doubt if I've read everything he's written because he wrote a lot, but he's an American author and professor of biochemistry at Boston University. And again, this is something a lot of people don't know. I think a lot of people think of Asimov as a science fiction writer. I don't think they realize he's actually a biochemist. And I will leave some links below. Our next group are Sir Julian Huxley, Jacques Monod, and Stephen Jay Gould. Now, Sir Julian Huxley was the first director of UNESCO and signatory to the Humanist Manifesto too. Now, he was an English evolutionary biologist, eugenicist, and internationalist. He was a proponent of natural selection and a leading figure in the mid-20th century evolutionary synthesis. He was a secretary of the Zoological Society of London and the first director of UNESCO and a founding member of the World Wildlife Fund. World Wildlife Fund. I still have this. I bit my tongue and I, I made a note of that in my other uh, video and I'm still having a little difficulty. I really bit it. Um, now, Julian Huxley was a eugenicist. But again, uh, if you look at the time that he lived, that eugenics doesn't always mean what people think it does. Uh, it To a lot of scientists at, of Huxley's age, it meant improving the species. It didn't mean lining people up and shooting them, which unfortunately is what some people think. Now, this has actually become kind of controversial. You, if you look around on YouTube, uh, you, you will find some videos. I didn't link any here, but... Um, where they are actually, especially going back a few years, they're actually criticizing uh, environmentalism on the grounds that it was founded by Huxley, who was a eugenicist, and so therefore environmentalism exists to promote eugenics, which really makes no sense whatsoever, because the point behind environmentalism is actually trying to save people's lives in places like India, where there are great masses of human beings, not trying to get rid of them. Um, now, Jacques Monod. Jacques Monod is a Nobel Prize winning biologist and a signatory to the Humanist Manifesto. Now, I've got a really great video interview with Jacques Monod that I think you should watch. Okay. Now, last on our list is Stephen Jay Gould, who, according to uh, Batten, is a Marxist author of many popular works promoting the evolutionary view. You notice the first thing he says is Gould was a Marxist. Again, simplistic. And I'm going to stop here because I'm going to look carefully at their sources about Stephen Jay Gould in the next video and why he's being called a Marxist. Anyway, thanks uh, for watching. I will probably have the next one up tomorrow. And uh, good night. Well, it's nighttime for me. Bye.